All right, welcome back to another week of performance reviews where I go over some of the videos that I posted over the last week and kind of go into the analytics and try to figure out what's going on. So I think a lot of people are obviously super hyped about uh, ReZero, right? Let's let's immediately start talking about ReZero. ReZero, I know it's only been a day of upload and I would like to see the full maturation point of this video, right? But already within a day of upload, 7,000 views, bro. 197 comments, 80% of that shit being Frazier. Let's look at the analytics. So it, let's look at the typical chart. Views are 4.9 times harder than usual. Now, it's definitely not on the same level of like Roche Day episode 2. But think about it like this, right? Roche Day has the power of trends to carry that and expose my audience to a completely new audience. Everyone is searching for that content, so it makes sense that Roche Day is going to do well. ReZero is not trending yet. It will in about two months. This is mostly community effort, right? And I'm very happy that in this typical period after 22 hours and 20 minutes of upload, the typical range is 1.1k to 1.5k. We're getting to 7.4, which is fantastic. What's going on? The same bullshit reasoning from YouTube saying, oh, people like to watch it and they're watching it for longer. Thanks, YouTube. How very helpful. Let's look at the audience. Not enough data to obviously show. What I like to see here is like returning viewers and new viewers to differentiate. Are these the power of tourists or is this like existing members? Revenue is probably not shown just yet either, but we will revisit this video in one week, next performance review and see how it's matured. But I am extremely happy with the community effort with ReZero because I do believe that this is purely through community effort. While there may be some new people coming in because of the hype of ReZero, I think that my audience, which is mainly filled with Isekai enjoyers, are, you know, getting the content they want and they're obviously watching it. And that's why it's doing better than usual. Other than ReZero, obviously there's some other stuff too, right? So with ReZero, we're always going to be doing an anti news cut content. Unfortunately, this cut content for Season 1 ends at Episode 6 and it continues in Season 2. I'm, I'm going to try to obviously cover stuff like this team. Break time and Petite is also on the line. And I'm going to try to figure out some other, you know, even like chibi reviews. Right? I'm basically looking at any type of ReZero content I can possibly cover without getting spoiled while watching it on an episode by episode basis. Um, this new series that we're doing here, right? So, I actually do enjoy these type of series too, right? Completely different type of reaction content, but still anime-centric. And these shows, they don't have to do amazing. This is perfectly fine. It's hitting what it requires. And I'm glad that, you know, these new series of content that we're doing is doing pretty well. Other than ReZero, yeah, we got, we, we got the daily sacrifices, right? We got the fucking daily sacrifices as well, right? Like, none of this shit... It, it, it's just such easy farm. People love people being sacrificed like in the Colosseum. And I also have a lot of fun doing it. The point of these videos is to have fun. It's not supposed to be mean or bullying. Well, bullying is funny sometimes. But like, it's not supposed to be heavy drama, right? I do ban a lot of more other people off stream of, you know. But like, making videos around those... It's not fun. These examples are fun. So I always try to figure out what's like a fun sacrifice we could do and try to cater towards those. But <laughs> look how lazy this shit is, bro. Just one minute clips back to back to back. Just upload it. it they all got over 1k views. That's actually so amazing. Tower of God. Let's look at Tower of God. It's definitely doing all right. And I, I think I'm, an important metric to look at is the likes as well, right? 310 likes is pretty damn good, man. I think that if your likes is around the 100s and can't pass 150 for my current range, it's not really that good. We want to aim for like above 200. So obviously, Tower of God, you know, we had, you know, Blue Turtle come back and it makes a sense of why people want to watch this, right? The whole revenge plot is finally being dished out slowly, but surely. Not enough data right now to show, you know, new returning or new viewers, but hey, pretty even split here. Surprised there's some females watchers here though, but this is usually always a breakdown in my region too. This is always like this, where it's like United States is number one, then India, Philippines, Indonesia, and then Canada is like bottom. Canada is such a fucking embarrassment, man. My average watching demographic is also very interesting. 5.9%, I think that my commentary, while you're going to say that I'm very immature and I do make a lot of, you know, ball jokes and poop jokes and stuff like that, I think that people can see the value in my, you know, more insightful commentary, and that's why some of the older audiences also enjoy my content. You know, these series popped the fuck off, man. 
these series pop the fuck off because 13 to 17 is zero percent no it's that those kids are not going to sign up with you know identifying with 13 to 17. when you're 13 year old and you want to watch porn and you click on a website are you going to say no you're not 18. like come on you're going to say you're 18. all those stats are fucking fixed but let's look at this 310 likes man 4500 views is actually fucking stupid all we're doing is reading a fucking chart but these kind of content is very compelling to a lot of people and i think that people it's like the same idea with like a tier list right tier lists or things that you compare it's it's very fun to watch and i think that chart systems like this where you explain different things it's very fun to watch as well let's look at it not enough data yeah pretty much even split here more of a younger audience for this one but it's pretty it's pretty fun like these videos it's we gotta like pick ones that doesn't spoil so i gotta be very careful about it but some of them it doesn't really matter if we get spoiled like the ages of characters right all right next up sylvanas videos does just all right we already talked about this kind of shit. sometimes i like to check out you know trash tastes uh what's it called trash taste uh highlights you know clips it's basically a solo podcast it's actually funny that like if the motherfuckers that I'm trying to podcast is with are gonna be lazy and fucking don't respond to messages, I'm just gonna do my own fucking podcast where I watch other motherfuckers and just commentate with them, bro. <laughs> so that's that. So let's talk about the ReZero opening, and I want to explain to you the idea of the ReZero openings and like why that is a thing. So let's look at the ReZero opening. 554 likes, fantastic. So the purpose of an opening reaction like this, where you combine everything in one, compared to individuals, couple ideas here. First thing is, I noticed that when I do individual opening reactions, as we watch each season individually, I tend to get spoiled by the visuals because I know more about the show, and then I can, you know, theory craft, and it ends up indirectly spoiling me. But aside from that, if I'm able to just like watch everything in one go out of context in the initial, who cares if it's a random character? Who cares about these different designs or forms? Like I'm going to forget about it by the time you get there. So it's not that big of a deal. So it's one way to kind of avoid spoilers, right? The other thing about the all opening reactions, I'm going to uh, show you guys my cartoon channel. So the thing about the cartoon channel here, right? The thing about the cartoon channel is quite often one of the best things you can do for reaction content is when you have a fresh new slate, meaning the algorithm doesn't know who your audience is, the best thing you can do for yourself is to react to every openings or endings or every intro trailers or whatnot of a specific niche. These kind of content is very accessible. I got very lucky with the Beyblade opening reactions and because of that I got introduced to the Beyblade audience. And then what you do after that is deliver Beyblade content every single time. If you look at the oldest videos, Hasbin Hotel viewership seems okay, but that was kind of when it was trending. And then I tried to do a little bit of Hell of a Boss, which just fell falling off. And then we pivoted it into Gravity Falls, which is doing a little bit better, but it's not as good. And then everything changes when Beyblade hits. Look at the average viewership difference, right? We couldn't even crack 1,000. Then when Beyblade hit, Beyblade popped off, I decided to go all in on Beyblade. And my second channel's uh, strategy is the exact opposite of my main channel. If my main channel is horizontal investment variety content with a lot of different topics, then my cartoon channel is basically one trick pony into one singular series. And finally, Beyblade took the bite, and obviously now I'm only delivering Beyblade reactions where the average viewership per video is straight up equal, if not more, than my main channel. I want you to realize how stupid that is. A channel size that's not even one it's got 1.5k subs now that doesn't even have a hundred videos that I post like one video a day usually is getting higher average viewership on some videos than my main channel and why is that the case that's the power of the YouTube recommendation system and how strong you can use it and utilize it if you understand the niche and continue to be focused in that niche once you start to fragment your audience and once you start to do many different types of content the algorithm loses faith in the uh in your videos and it's less likely to send as much you know viewership impressions out to people but so the idea again with using using the beyblade example as an example right using this example the whole point of opening reaction was to tap into a completely separate audience that has never seen my channel but knows re-zero and it takes some time to cook 
I want to show you here. Let me show you the analytics on my cartoon channel just to show you the analytics of my Beyblade opening reactions and how that you know shows. So here's the Beyblade channel. Ooh, one out of ten. But then again, that's fucking every video from Beyblade channel because it's so easy to do that. Let's look at the analytics. Let's look at the content. Let's sort by views. Let's look at these two, right? So it actually the Beyblade reaction for the first three days, you can see here, right? Look at the viewership. The first three days, it was nothing, 300. But what happens is that sometimes the algorithm will decide to test your videos out. And I got very lucky and boom, it fucking shot up after the first three days. And look at that, right? It's still fucking going because I'm still delivering Beyblade content. If you look at the all openings, but the Japanese version as well, yes. For the first three days, it was kind of like that. And then it shot up, right? And this is the idea of opening reactions where it's all combined into one and you're trying to start something brand new. That is the same concept that I'm approaching with, uh, where is it? My ReZero opening reaction. But obviously it's only been one day or so since posting. So we gotta let this shit cook. In an ideal scenario, if my plan executed properly, then something like this will happen, right? Something like this will happen where we just fucking shoot up. I'm not banking on it to happen. It doesn't need to happen. But if it did, it would be definitely very, very powerful if, it, if that happened. But that's the opening reaction. We're going to let it cook for next week and we'll see what happens after that. All right. Next up. Uh, Dangerous of My Heart. Let's check out Dangerous of My Heart finale. Look at the amount of likes. I want you to look at the difference between the amount of likes that Dangerous in My Heart, which is a community series, gets compared to a tourist show, just like Wistoria, right? 162 likes versus 288 likes, right? Remember, this number is roughly what my actual community really is, right? Watching shows that's not airing and simply doing polls. Let's look at the numbers here. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Dangerous in My Heart. After one day and 22 hours, it's definitely above average, right? Dangerous in My Heart was a fantastic series where not just in terms of the content, but analytics. There's not been a single dud Dangerous in My Heart video. Every video performed so well. That's what you want to see. The last time I think this happened was uh, Charlotte. Charlotte was another example where every video just fucking banged. And then there's some unfortunate examples like um, Our Last Crusade, which is honestly not a community series because I brute forced that. But maybe Bunny Girl Senpai is a good example or even Gates, where people only want to watch it for some portions and they don't care about the rest of it. And it sucks being stuck into something. But, you know, for a community series, if it got voted in, then we're going to finish it. But very happy with Dangerous in My Heart's performance. It was fantastic throughout. And I'm glad that we covered Dangerous in My Heart in time. Next up. We got more random farming videos. <laughs> Dude, I am literally just making ReZero content without even watching ReZero. I just want you to know how shameless I am. This video, I talk about how I farm the community posts and I farm the trailers. This video itself is so ironic because that video is another video where I'm farming ReZero content without watching ReZero. Do you understand how ridiculous that is? In a video where I explain about how shameless of farming I am, you don't even realize that you're being recorded and that video itself is another shameless farm, man. Like, holy shit. Um, this video actually did pretty well. Now, why did this analytics video do pretty well? Look at this shit, right? 285 likes. I think that a lot of people enjoy how brutally honest I am and how straightforward I am when I'm approaching the game of YouTube. A lot of people have this fake mask on, thinking that they're white knights of justice, saying, oh, I don't care about the analytics, I'm simply here to watch what I want, and I don't care if the views go down. Those are the same motherfuckers that's gonna cry and be depressed when the views go down. I don't give a fuck about that. This isn't about... This is all about finding an overlap between what I'm good at, which is yapping, what I find fun, and being able to monetize that content. And... Every step throughout this journey, I will explain to you my game plan, my strategy of how to work with the YouTube algorithm. Even if you're not doing reaction content, you can apply my broader concepts of finding an audience, delivering to that niche consistently and trying to figure out new trends to grow that audience. 
it applies for every niche, right? And I think that people find this kind of content very uh, refreshing, that someone is so shameless enough to explain exactly what's going on. And exactly, right? Like, why would I start ReZero back then when there was no community? It's in my best interest to hold off as long as possible until a deadline shows up for a new season. Then I should farm it and maximize the trends off of it, right? I will... And you know what the funniest thing is? Not, not this comment. The, the comment was pretty funny, though. Browse feature is recommendation system. YouTube search engine does not fucking matter. If you need to rely on the YouTube search engine to get views, you've already failed as a YouTuber. Unless you're making guide content. I want you to, uh, I want you to, I want, I want you to focus on this specific, uh, comment. Are you ready? I want you to focus on this comment. Where is the comment that I'm looking for? Is it here or is it on a community post, man? I can't tell. Maybe, maybe it was on um, this specific content, man. Because uh, I, I did want to talk about the mindsets of some people about how they think that... Um... Here, hold up, hold up. Right over here. People like this are so fucking stupid because they don't even know why they're upset. And let me explain to you. I talk smack about content farmers, but you know what? I respect the hustle you're doing. And this part, I want you to focus. Why would you get mad at content farmers, right? It's the same mentality and ideology as that other loser that was mad that I was doing YouTube full time and that I shouldn't be expecting money from it, right? But it's fine that if I hold down a job, you know what this is? At the core of it, these people don't even know how they're feeling because they've been so cucked into their societal restraints where they have to work a day job they hate and come home and they see other content creators do shit that they want to do and make more money than them. They see that this is unfair and they project it by saying bullshit like, oh, I don't actually care if you're doing this while holding down a day job, but if you're doing this full time and expecting money, you know, that's like not the way it should be. No, you just have such a cucked perception of what society is and that's why you're gonna be so mad without even knowing why you're mad this guy talking smack about content farmers simply comes from this place of insecurity looking at other people trying to grind and hustle and follow their dreams but i respect the hustle you're doing i i, I guess like thanks but like you don't even know why you're mad at content farmers bro most of these people that get mad at content creators for trying to grind simply sees their life and how pathetic it is and compared to someone else online, you know, having a fun time. And that's what the frustration comes from. But they don't even know how to fucking internalize their feelings because they're dumb children. Then I have to make a separate video doing a fucking psychology in-depth analysis and do a fucking therapy session, bro. Fucking embarrassing. Too many losing heroines. 278 likes. What I say about the amount of likes, right? If you look at the likes, if it's around the 250 plus, that's my community, man. Look at it. Very good. Very nice. After the typical period in this period, we're exceeding it, right? Too many losing heroines is actually so fun to watch. Actually, the amount of revenue here is pretty high. Not a bad RPM. We always want to aim for above $2 RPM, but that's not really up to me, right? It depends on how long you guys watch. Let's look at the audience. Unfortunate that there's no new people coming in, but this again suits that specific uh, type of videos. And what is this video for? <clears throat> it's for my community, right? Rom-com enjoyers that enjoys me molding. Very glad that Too Many Losing Heroines is not a dud yet. Ooh, let's talk about... Uh, look at the amount of likes here. I want you to look at the difference of likes of a series that does well and a series that people don't actually give a fuck about. Nobody remembers me. Nobody's gonna remember this series, bro. Nobody is straight up gonna remember this series when I drop it next week. I don't even know if I want to continue, to be honest. Like, it's... it's. So what happens in these scenarios is... Let me... Hold on. So... What I usually do is I give... Two... Uh, two strike system, where... If you have two consecutive back-to-back -back, um, under average performance, as a weekly series, you do not deserve this spot. This spot could be another SAO, or it could be another ReZero episode. There is no point investing into a weekly series that is mid. And I'm sorry, man. Whatever you may think about this show, even if the source material is good, I just... I can understand why people don't care. Like, this episode was to be a hype episode, 
Like, it's it's truly telling when it's like a hype episode that should pop off, yet people don't care about it. I've already explained my thought about it in the tier list videos, but... I'm low-key thinking about dropping this without even giving another check. People really like this one, huh? People really like... The Sylvanas videos are sometimes hit or miss. Uh, people really enjoy the racism jokes. <laughs> Who would've guessed? Uh, let's see, let's see. This random video did pretty well, huh? The Kito Senpai? About a random manga that we don't even know yet. I guess a lot of people enjoy... Let's see... It's our existing community. I guess our existing community actually does, you know... What's the amount of likes here? 151? Not bad. Not bad, right? Pretty decent viewership off a random fucking video. Obviously, any use cut content that does well. Over here. I think a lot of people are upset about my takes about rom-com, about how most rom-com series are trash, designed for losers, marketed for losers, created by losers to sell a delusional fantasy to losers, to think that your loser ass can have a perfect Gyaru waifu one of the day without ever changing yourself. I, th I say I speak the truth and people get personally insulted by it because they they feel the soul piercing takes that I'm giving and they cannot internalize how they feel so they dislike. I'm sorry man, I know I'm right. I know I am right and I will continue to be unapologetically give raw takes that may sound like an asshole. I don't give a fuck. I may be an asshole, but I'm right and you know I'm right and that's why you disliked it because you felt personally attacked by my takes. Go fuck yourself. Let's look at the video, though. Man, Lunar Equinox actually has such great videos. I love reacting to his videos. Yeah, minus one subscribers. Yep, leave. Go away. If you can't take my, you know, uh, my takes, get the fuck out of here. Like, I want you to know, I do not give a fuck about subscriber count. Sub count means nothing to me. You know why? Because that's trimming the fat and that's getting rid of dead subs. All I care about is this. All I care about is this graph and the monthly viewership of reaching 1.3 million views per month without relying on shorts, only through long-form content. Subs does not fucking matter. A lot of people seem to have this delusion that if you have a lot of subs that you're a successful YouTuber, that could be so fucking wrong. It's so fucking wrong. Subs don't matter. Sub doesn't matter. Ad revenue is purely based on the watch time of videos and how long they watch it for. Sub count is an inflated number that is such a terrible metric that people use to catfish their shitty accounts. Whenever you look at a YouTube channel success, all you have to do is look at this. The public data of monthly viewership. And also check, are they making shorts? Because if they're making shorts, their viewership is going to be extremely inflated. You need to look at the average, you need to look at the monthly viewership through long form content. And that is an actual fucking definitive metric that you can use to compare different YouTube channels. And again, all of this is public data. I'm not flexing here. I'm simply showing you numbers. Here's another anime that we're probably going to drop. In fact, I think I will drop this. Look at this, man. Look at the amount of likes. Again, look at the amount of likes here. Compared to the community series, no one actually give a fuck about Elusive Samurai. They may have in episode 1 or 2, though. Dropped. Should have dropped this last week. And honestly, I don't even... I don't, I don't even, like, question it. Like, it makes a lot of sense. Episode 1 and 2 was fucking amazing. And now... It's like... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it just feels like they're stalling so hard. It, it, it just feels like they're stalling so fucking hard. Like, the con... Episodes are honestly not bad, but it's boring. And, like, again, we cannot be having mediocre. I'm sorry. Elu Samurai is dropped. Next one. This is the way we're watching ReZero. Oh my god. How does this guy keep farming ReZero content without even watching ReZero? What the fuck is he doing? I don't know. I don't know how I did it. I, I think that at this point, it's a talent. I straight up have a talent for being so shameless and figuring ways out to farm content and milk it for everything it's got in the most creative fucking way. <laughs> And this video did fantastic. Why did it do fantastic? Because everyone is very hyped up for ReZero to premiere on my channel. And there's this huge discourse between are we going to watch the director's cut? Or are we going to watch the, you know, the normal way? And I was very adamant in this. What did I do in this video? I was very adamant and I want you to look at the comments. 
People love it when I am extremely adamant, I stick to my guns, and I'm very confident in my stance. It doesn't matter if it's right or wrong, to be honest. As long as I'm charismatic and confident enough to stand by my ideals, and I'm, I'm apologetic in doing so, people will love that shit. And this is how people respond. It's the Donald Trump effect, dude. It's the Koenji effect, right? It doesn't... People don't give a shit if you're a nice person or a bad person. It's all about just authentic yourself and people can see the truth, bro. I basically just called all these losers out, you know, wanting for the director's cut, and all the comments are just giga, 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 giga. And again, just returning viewers. A short video like this is gonna also have a very low RPM, right? Look at this 70 cent RPM. Because it's a very short video where pre rolls don't even exist, you need to hit over 8 minute video to get the pre rolls enabled. Short videos like this aren't for the money though. It's simply just to stimulate the algorithm and get the viewership out and get more people coming in and realize that we're watching ReZero. Next up, we know about dangers. SAO is still holding on. I know that the amount of likes for SAO is a little bit lower, but uh, it makes a lot of sense. And hold up, let me go to the bathroom and I'll explain to you exactly why SAO is like this. All right, the reason why SAO is like this is for a multitude of reasons. The most important reason is SAO got voted in like six months ago. How long have we been watching SAO for? Like if you go back to Social Blade Exam, right? The problem with continuing a poll series that started maybe around here Right, look at the growth, right? More new people are coming in every, you know, other month. And we keep growing like this in an exponential way. And the more people that come in, I'm forcing content that Neymar voted in, right? So this is a situation where you're failing from success because too many new people are coming in and they're being served content that they never asked for. And it's in my best interest to finish up, wrap up, you know, SAO and try to pull in. And I need to, like... The more we grow, the more cognitive I need to be. Very, very intentional about like who my audience is and what they want. I will finish SAO and I think I'm gonna give it more priority than ReZero to be honest. I think that's in my best interest. SAO needs to be wrapped up and I need to give these new ReZero people coming in uh, a reason to stick around. And we need a new community series to replace SAO that's for the ReZero folks coming in. That is the strategy that they're gonna commit to. Let's look at uh, Tensura Masayuki. Tensor content is always so hype, right? Tensor content is always so hype in my channel. People love this shit. Masayuki episode was also very, very entertaining. Views were up 57%. I'm very glad, man. It's kind of sad that a lot of people, you know, drop Tensor due to the meeting episodes in the earlier portion of the seasons. But, hey, you know what that means? means that I can fucking eat up all their audience, baby. <laughs> Great RPM above $2. I'm very happy with that. Let's look at the audience. Look at that, bro. No new viewers. Because obviously, you know, this is Isekai territory where we rule, right? This is our stomping grounds. This video did so well too, bro. Bro, this video... This video did so... And a lot of people... So, there is one person that was so mad about me shitting on Sakura in this video. Some dude showed up just absolutely seething and hating that like, I shit on Sakura, their favorite waifu in Naruto, man. I'm like, cry about it, dumbass. 79% up, man. Holy shit. Look at that shit. 4.6k views just off of reading a list of girls that people fucking hate, man. I'll, 
That's why, like, genuinely, these types of videos, guys, like... These chart videos are fucking insane. These chart videos from... Anime World? Like... Bro. These kind of videos, people fucking eat it up. And this is not the only channel, by the way. This is not the only channel that does this. There's so many channels that just lays down a bunch of bullshit facts in a chart way. And people love... It's just such easily digestible content. Like... It's, it's genius, to be honest. And it's also even more genius to fucking farm the shit out of it. Let's look at the audience. No new people. Not that many, right? Not that many. More Sylvanas videos. Nokotan. Let's look at Nokotan. Nokotan is unfortunate, man. It truly did fall off. The most recent episode was good, though. Right? The most recent episode was actually good. But the problem is that people already dropped it after episode 2. It's sad. But still, it's doing way better. It, we're not gonna drop Nokotan. Like, we're gonna finish it, baby. Like, this shit's still doing above expectations, man. Perfectly fine. It's just, you know... I feel like it could do even better if people just waited around for a bit, but that's the thing. The anime fans, right? It doesn't matter how good your content is. If you can't... Give people a reason to stick around immediately in the beginning. People will drop and move on that fast, and there's nothing you can do about it, man. And that's and that's the same thing with Yozakuro as well. It's like I I bet the content is good. Like I have no doubt that all your you know favorite series that I dropped, I bet it gets good. But if the anime people drop it and they don't even get to the good part, then what is the point, right? There's got to be a delicate balance of having great pacing and engaging content in the beginning to make sure that people stick around. Uh, Failure Frame. Let's look at Failure Frame. Failure Frame is barely hanging on. Failure Frame is barely hanging on. It's definitely not doing bad, right? This is landing where it should land. It's a 6 out of 10 isekai that's meeting expectations. It's serving its job, right? I shut on the show a lot for the fucking CGI, but uh, we're keeping Failure Frame around. There's no reason to drop it. It's, it's meeting expectations. It's, it's just meeting expectations. Now, Days of My Stepsister is another interesting case. If you look at the amount of likes here, it's, it's roughly the same, right? A lot of people don't really care about these shows. <sighs> what is Thursdays? Days of My Stepsister, Perry, and Failure Frame. Thursdays are honestly the weakest fucking day. Thursdays are the weakest, weakest days. Yeah, Perry sucked as well. Perry absolutely sucked. But Perry has shown me good viewership, and Perry has failed only once. This is the second strike of Days of My Stepsister. I low-key want to drop this show. I do. And by next week, if Perry also does bad next episode, I want to drop that show too, so we can watch more ReZero and SAO. Like, is it in my best interest to cover these shows that are just average? No. For every one of these videos I make, there's more people that's waiting on shows like this. Look at the... Like, the likes pretty much just tell how many people actually give a fuck. I am undecided about Days of My Stepsister, but just be aware of what's going on. Next up... <laughs> more chart videos. Dude, these chart videos are fucking stupid. How Why? 4,300 views of me just reading off a dumbass chart, dude. Straight up. It's a fucking one minute clip of a chart that I'm literally reading out to you like it's a fucking bedtime story and you're in bed and I'm tucking you in and just reading out loud. And people eat this shit up. They love it and the like simply tells that, right? 311 likes, bro. Think about it. I have to spend like 30 to 40 minutes reacting to fucking stepsis. Then I have to pay Sir Gregor to edit the content. Right? That's more money going into the product. And then this is what I get out of it? When I can read out a one minute fucking video and get four times the viewership? Like, come on. Like, how do you expect me to invest in shows where it performs mid when it takes money to make these videos when I can read a fucking one minute chart and do this? Does this make any sense to you? Like, I want you to genuinely understand from my perspective. Do you think it makes sense? 
for me to commit and invest more money into failing projects? It makes no sense. There's no reason any sane person would do that, right? It, it's just, and maybe, maybe if I truly love that series so much that I'm willing to tank it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, the, the, this shit, ugh. I just can't justify, you know, paying Sir Gregor to edit these low-performing videos when I could just have something else going on. It just, none of it fucking makes sense, man. Next up, oh, we farming Roche Steady content. And don't worry, we're not done with farming Roche Steady content yet. Any opportunity to this Roche Steady content, we will farm Roche today. Let's look at this. Poop Shoveler defeated by Frog. Parry anime, this is the first time that it's done this bad. And this could be the beginning of the end. Or the end of the beginning. Ha, <laughs> re-zero. We can't have weekly series perform like this. We cannot. However, Perry has proven to me throughout the last episodes that it's been very good. However, if the next episode is also underperforming, I will drop this in a heartbeat and make more SAO and ReZero content. What else is there? Oh yes. Oh yes. So let's look at Roche today, bro. What? 800 likes. Nothing can compete. What did ReZero have? I think ReZero had like uh, 600, like, we need to give ReZero more time to cook, right? Roche today has almost gotten one week to cook and it got to 800 likes. Like, this is insane. And this isn't even like uh, the best performing video either. Whenever Yuki shows up, the views go up, man. Just that simple. Look at that shit. Typical period in the first five days and seven hours, bro. 1.3 to 3.4k average. We hit 14k. How the fuck is it possible for every Roshteri to exceed 10k? It actually blows my mind. A bad Roshteri video will hit for like 10k or like 9 or 8k. Like, do you understand how stupid that is? There is no other show when on a good day can even reach a bad performing Roshteri video. I want you to realize how stupid this is. A bad Roshteri, the worst Roshteri viewership is still higher like tripling any other good weekly series like like it's just what what but at the end of the day i did not earn this this is me being bailed out due to the sensational trends and it's up to me to figure out what i'm gonna do right and again that that's gonna be dealt with the audience with the uh community series but pretty good man you would think that there would be more new viewers coming in because of the sheer amount of views, but it's still returning viewers. There is a hidden lurking rom-com audience that yearns for this content, and I will keep delivering on it. Next up. Mm. <laughs> I think that this video, the 6.1k, 6.1k me reading a chart. What the fuck? And the main reason why this video did so well and got 435 likes is because Regulus is facing the thumbnail, right? Think about it. We're about to start ReZero. Everyone knows who this character is, but I'm baiting on the thumbnail with a character from season two that hasn't shown up in season one that gets the audience very excited and interested. It's the perfect storm. The concept of the video is good, and the thumbnail is baiting so fucking hard with Regulus. It just makes sense. It's actually so stupid, man, these videos. And look at this. It's all just returning viewers, too. It's not even, like, new people coming in, bro. It's just returning fucking videos, bro. Like, that's so fucking funny. It's so fucking funny. What about the old ReZero video from six months ago? Did I get any extra likes in starting ReZero? We could check that out later on. Maybe. Oshinoko. Let's check out the Oshinoko video. Oshinoko. 323 likes. Perfect. Right? Absolutely perfect. Oshinoko is hitting, bro. Now, it's not on the level of Roshitere, right? But it doesn't need to be, right? This is a more realistic depiction of a show that my audience likes and can get consistent viewership. I'm not gonna ever expect uh, Roshitere performances on any series. Nope. That's the surefire way to make yourself depressed when the views go away because you didn't even understand that those views are not yours. You did not earn that. 
Roshnoko did pretty good. Let's look at the audience. Yeah, all new returning viewers here. Let's look at the revenue. 1.58. Actually, let's look at the revenue for uh, Roshnoko here. What, did, what was the RPM? I would, I would assume that the Roshnoko RPM is going to be higher because people care about it more. 219 versus 158. So again, just more people watching it for a longer time. Both videos are similar duration, 31 minutes, right? Yet one is higher in advertisement RPM, meaning more people watched it because they're just more engaged. 946 average view duration here. And over here, 936. That's interesting. I doubt that 10 seconds is going to be the defining factor. But you also have to realize that the 10 second difference is the simple average duration viewership difference. But one, there could be exceptional people that's been watching the entire video throughout, which is skewing it. So you're, the difference of 10 seconds average duration is actually more significant than the 10 seconds, if you understand what I'm saying. Next up. This, I invested a lot of time into this, huh? One hour video. One hour video, and it's probably not the best usage of my time if we're talking about min-maxing. However, it's a topic that I'm very interested in. 146 likes and 7 dislikes for motherfuckers that are triggered and cannot understand that what I'm telling is the truth and you are loser free-to-play players who are whining. Let's look at this. Did a... So, look at the graph here. I want you to look at the graph. Look at that little spike. So, when you... Because, like, this is not an anime reaction, right? The purpose of these kind of videos is to try to spread out to a wider audience. And sometimes the algorithm, look at the, look at the spike here, right? After the first one day and six hours, or five hours, it spiked here, right? This is not normal. This is the algorithm trying to push it out to a wider audience to test out my content. Which is the purpose of videos like this, where it's not my regular niche. I'm covering gotcha now. But why would I do that? Because I know that gotcha players also watch anime. So it's not too out of left field. Let's look at the audience. Look at that. Way more new people coming in, right? That's the purpose of these videos. It's to get those tourists. And higher RPM definitely on average because it's a one hour video, right? People are going to watch it for a longer time. Therefore, a higher RPM. It just makes sense. If you want to look at the RPM for the charts, let's look at the regular one. What was it? Revenue, 156. Average duration, 702. Definitely lower than the anime reaction content. But it also is only a 17 minute video. It's half the fucking duration. Makes sense. Isekai Shikaku, which is a weekly series that we're watching tonight. I love this show, man. I genuinely love this show. 416 likes, man. Look at that shit. 5.5k views, 416 likes. People with people understand the greatness of Isekai Shikaku, man. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Gotta love that shit. Exceeding. Exceeding. Let's look at the audience. New people coming in? A little bit. A little bit. I think that this is one of my favorite titles. This Isekai main character is deporting immigrants. There's a... I already showed you a video, but there's another YouTuber, an Indonesian YouTuber with 500k subs that made a community post about my video because of the fucking, you know, title here, which is pretty funny. Look at the revenue. Pretty good. Two dollars. I'm happy with that. Very happy about Isekai Shikaku's performance, man. Every video has been very good. Man, let's look at this one. What happened here? It is extremely rare for me to not be able to cross 1,000 views per video, but this is not even 500. Exactly what was the point of this video and why did it do so bad? It was another Kaiju 8 video. In fact, I lost the sub doing this. People just didn't give a fuck about this topic at all. I don't think it's the thumbnail, nor the title. I think that they're pretty sensational titles. So then what is it at the end of the day? The video itself was boring? I mean, I don't wanna... I don't wanna, I don't wanna go around and like, you know say that other people's videos are boring. It's my job as a reactor to make that content as fun as possible. But if the material that I have to work with is also, you know, less than attractive, then I guess you could have a situation like that. But it's, it's, it's pretty rare, extremely rare. Like, look at the viewership across the board, right? To get a video that's like not being able to reach 1000, right? 
So this is my first L in a long time. But, uh, it, you know, it happens. You just move on. You take the hit and you move on. Next up. <laughs> performance review of a performance review that's so meta. You got the tensor content, you got the tier list. It's actually kind of crazy how people still love, you know, tensor and any news cut content. Let's look at this. Fantastic engagement. Longer than usual. Look at this. It's not even 30 minute video, yet it gets more viewership. Why? Because the light novel and like the tensor of fans they're more geared towards long-form content, and they love hearing everything about their favorite show. Look at the audience. It's the same people coming in. Revenue. Our highest RPM so far, I think, because people simply just watch it for a longer time. Tensor cut content always bails me out. Uh, Q&A. Drama video. The drama video. Let's get the drama video. Look at that. The amount of likes there accurately depicts my audience, right? Anytime you have around 250 likes, that's exactly the ballpark range of, you know, the community series. This is a video where I pop off on a monkey crying about that has no understanding of the YouTube algorithm. Yeah, this is the one where I crucified that loser for saying because his opinion was me dropping anime series is not going to make my channel grow and I'm not going to be able to create a community if I keep dropping shows and cater towards people that want to see other things. What a dumbass. What an absolute fucking dumbass. And every time, every time that I make these kind of videos, the purpose of these videos, it's honestly a rallying cry. It's a group bonding exercise. Because the more I do this, the more people see how my authentic personality could be. And when they see shit like this, they realize that like they, they get to know a little bit more about me and how like, I'm so adamant and like uh like vindictive about these things and I stand I stand on business and people love that shit. It's 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 a way for people to see my personality outside of anime content and get to know some other parts of me and get more bonded that way, right? Every time I say this shit, like many everyone just goes base, 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 right? Everybody they people literally sub. People literally sub due to the drama videos and of how unapologetically I am. Just, just go to the video and just read the comments. And everybody just fucking loves this shit, bro. Everybody fucking loves this shit. Look at the amount of people that subbed as well, right? Some people are gonna unsub, and that's fine. You can get the fuck out if you can't handle the heat. I don't want you here, right? But these videos are always good for creating and strengthening the community. And a lot of people think that me crucifying people they're like, oh my god, you're gonna run out of viewers. Like, they're so stupid. They're genuinely so stupid. Of the amount of people that actually watch the videos, about 5% of people will comment. And amongst those 5%, about like 1% of people are gonna act out. And I'm making fun of those 1% of the 5% using arbitrary numbers as an objective. Like, that does not fucking matter. Unhinged mentally ill people are such a speck of grain in this beach of a fucking, you know, sand pit playing field where me banning them and making fun of them, it'll simply embolden my audience and our channel's gonna grow even more. And I've proven that with facts and logic with just showing this right over here. Anything else? More ReZero shameless content, bro. Bro, how the fuck am I gonna get 200 likes? on this ReZero video, two minute clip, or I just go over the fucking community poll, bro. Like, I literally was so lazy. I was so fucking lazy, bro. Like, again, being able to farm ReZero without even watching ReZero, right? Look at this shit. This poll is simply an exercise to get people to realize that this is how we poll for anime, but of course ReZero is gonna win. And then I do that engage, and, I, and I get all this engagement. What do I do? Then I fucking make a video talking about the poll and do a waifu war on it, man. It's just such good engagement baits. Next up. The age Brandon reviews reactions are pretty mid. I'm not saying his content is mid, but just a recession for my audience. I think that for certain topics, very exciting topics like 
Roshdere, there is still an opportunity to cover it and not be a waste, but for some of the other lower performing heroes, it's not really worth the going. Osan Newbie Adventurer actually did pretty bad, huh? So let's look at Osan Newbie Adventurer. 137 likes is not very good. Again, we want to get around 250 plus for the community to show up, right? What does that mean? It means that my audience doesn't really care about it. Now, I'm fine taking a hit to the chin here because I actually do enjoy this show compared to some of the other shows that's, lot, that's not performing. So I'm going to be more graceful and give it more opportunities, but we'll let it cook. Uh, it's just drip marketing, uh, drip marketing. Uh, it's just more me explaining the analytics. Actually, this video did pretty well, huh? Please don't drop this anime. Yep, there's going to be a lot of dislikes here because people just don't. And the dislikes comes from monkeys that got their, they only watch for one specific show. And then once you drop it, those monkeys will turn on you and say, you are so selfish for dropping the one show that I only need to watch in this channel while you are holding hostage of like 200 other people that wants other shows. It's like, you're so fucking stupid. You are so selfish. You're dumb. You're dumb children. You have no understanding of how the shit works. And you're getting mad because you don't even understand the fucking logic behind it. But again, what is my job now? My job is to fucking babysit retards, man. That is what it's, it is, what it is, man. That's just my job. This SCO episode did really well, actually. It's because Kikoka's reveal of the AI plot. That was fucking crazy. Anything else? This is a pretty good. I enjoyed this one. This opening reaction was pretty good. Man. This content is so fucking bad, man. Like, SCO editization... Uh, Cut content, I dropped it immediately, right? It's just like, oh my god, people do not give a fuck about SEO cut content. So I'm like, yep, I'm gonna drop that. And is there more? Uh, it's just Tower of God and more, you know, roasted content I farm. But I think that's pretty much it, right? I think that's pretty much it for the last week's worth of content. And I will, I'm definitely dropping Elusive Samurai. I don't know how I feel about Days of My Stepsister. Perry has one more episode left. And that's pretty much the updates for this week's performance reviews. I'll see you on the next one.